When news about the Vice President of Nigeria, Yemi Oshimbajo, needing surgery for a long-standing injury made headlines, some Nigerians will have thought he will head abroad for treatment. Instead, the Vice President chose to undergo the surgical procedure on his right femur at Duchess International Hospital, a local hospital here in Nigeria. The Vice President was clear that he had confidence in Nigerian doctors both at home and abroad and would prefer they handled the operation. The question now is, will this show of confidence in our local healthcare system by the president influence the political class that constantly uh, engages in medical tourism to utilize facilities at home rather than going abroad for health emergencies? Joining us on this show this morning, right now, to give us an update on Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo's condition following his surgery over the weekend, and also the medical infrastructure available in Nigeria, and the efforts made to curb medical tourism, is Dr. Tukumbo Shitabe, Chief Executive Officer of Duchess International, and Dr. Adedoyin Dosun Ogumbi. Welcome to the morning show, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, good morning. Well, uh, let me start with you, uh, Dr. Shitabe, just to give us an update on the uh, procedure uh, that uh, the vice president underwent. Uh, we are told in the reports that this was uh, a case of knee surgery and that the procedure, the surgical procedure was successful. Uh, but we'll we just uh, be interested in the update. And, you know, the sentiments that have been expressed about his choice of a local hospital. How significant is that? Okay, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much um, for, for asking that question. I think the first thing um, that um, we would like to say is that um, this is a hugely significant responsibility that we have at the Duchess International Hospital, and we do not take it lightly. Of course, together with the rest of the nation, our thoughts and our prayers are with the Vice President and with his family at this point in time. Um, to speak directly to the question you're asking, um, the Vice President um, is making um, good and steady progress, and um, we expect that, um, that things will continue to proceed in that um, direction. Yes, he did um, sustain a fracture um, to his, um, his thigh bone, and um, he's had very successful surgery, and we expect that um, he will make, continue to make satisfactory progress, and uh, we hope that he will be discharged at some point soon. Well, Dr. Gumbi, you want to add to that? Thank you very much again. Thank you very much for, for having us. It is a, a great a, a privilege, um, uh, and uh, I think as a, as, as a people, uh, I think we, are, we need to be very uh, uh, grateful uh, that uh, our Vice President has, has chosen uh, to uh, have his uh, care done right, right here in the, in the hospital in, in, in Nigeria. We, we are building capacity in this country, and I think uh, uh, Nigerians need to, need to know that there is capacity to do a lot of sophisticated uh, procedures right here, and the Vice President has demonstrated this, um, and this, this is really is leadership in, in action. Uh, now, uh, again, um, so this uh, this is a, a stress fracture, as, as as we say, meaning that it's a relatively uh, very subtle uh, compared to compared to a, a, a frank, open, uh, and more obvious uh, uh, break. So a subtle fracture is um, is like, uh, or, or some people may may say hairline fracture, uh, and, and so uh, relatively um, subtle in its appearance, but it would still be very painful. So with all of the Vice President's duties and all the campaign that he's done recently, all that was done uh, in, in, in significant pain. So that's why the procedure was, was necessary. And again, as, as our, our CEO has said, he's making steady uh, improvement and recovery from, from the operation. And we're so glad to hear that. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Shitabe. Much has been made of the political optics of the vice president choosing a Nigerian hospital, not necessarily Nigerian doctors, because people fly abroad 
to see Nigerian doctors, but he chose to stay here at home. But beyond that, I don't see a man like the vice president putting his agility, his health, or even his life on the line if you agree that there's no such thing as a minor surgery if he actually did not trust Duchess International Hospital. So can you tell us why he chose you? What are the facilities that you have and why that he was confident in that choice? And also, there's also the perception in the midst of all of this that Duchess International Hospital I mean, your, your facility is really grand. It's, you know, out of the reach of most of the Nigerian population, even though your brand mission is quality and affordable health care. So can you just take us through all of that? Oh, yes, of course. I, um, I, I would first. Yes, of course. I, um, I, I would first um, begin by challenging the perception that um, the service is um, an expensive service out of the reach of most Nigerians. The, the fact is, um, it's not. And this is part of what has informed the Vice President's choice to select the Duchess International Hospital as his um, preferred hospital for um, having his care here. We at the Duchess speak in terms of um, what we call access to affordable world-class health care. And what that means really is that we have given a lot of thought into the very highly emotive subject of access and taken deliberate steps to break, to bring down the barriers, those obstacles that prevent people um, um, accessing those essential services. So I'll take, for example, um, to register at the Duchess International Hospital and to see a doctor is no more than 5,000 naira. And, and that, that is the first and most important statement that I felt that we, we needed to, to make. Um, the service also offers a, a wide and extensive range of essential services. So that's another very important point. We, we have a consultant-led service at the Duchess International Hospital. Um, it's very important that the decisions that are made within the first few minutes are, are, are precise decisions. So you're far more likely to see a specialist consultant within the first 10 minutes of being in the hospital at the Duchess um, than perhaps any other hospital um, in Lagos. Of course, all of that contributes to the safety and the security that patients have when they come in. It's also really, really important to us that our, um, the entire community is able to access the service. So apart from the fact that we are priced um, to, to ensure that we are no more expensive than um, any other hospital in our vicinity, we, we place a, a deliberate emphasis on 24-7 access to emergency care and critical care services. Um, the complete range of services that we offer is from, from pediatrics, children, to elderly medicine, and that includes um, maternal and child health, um, lots of specialties and subspecialties um, within our practice. And, and we also offer this, this environment that allows Nigerians in the diaspora to, to come back. So yes, we are focused on reversing medical tourism, but we're also focused on, on bringing our boys and girls back home to, to practice um, here. So all of this really contributes to a, a safe and secure environment um, that um, would enable people to come and have the care that they need. And I, I think this is largely what has informed the, the Vice President's um, decision to, to have his, um, his procedure at the Duchess International Hospital. Um, I would go further to say, of course, that the concept of um, reversing medical tourism is, is very much talked about. Um, but in real terms, um, there's about 600 billion naira that's hemorrhaging these shores every year. Um, just some simple arithmetic says, well, that's perhaps about 60,000 Nigerians on average spending about $20,000 a pop. Um, it's really important to have the range of services that will keep that money, keep that expertise um, within this country. And that precisely is what the Duchess International Hospital represents. Um, I would go further to say, actually, that we need not one Duchess Hospital. In this country, needs about 50 um, Duchess Hospitals. So the things that are really important to providing that access, bringing down the cost of healthcare, um, access to registration and essential services, having the breadth of services available, um, having specialists front end the service, um, having 24-hour emergency critical care to build a service upon, and having the right governance arrangements, both clinically and administratively. Those are all of the things that, are, that contribute to a, a robust environment. And I think that 
is um, the confidence that the Vice President has displayed in the service. And um, that service is available to all um, at this point. Dr. Dosimo Gumbi, do you have anything to add to that with well, regards to why you were chosen in spite of all the options available to the Vice President? I will really echo what the CEO of Dutchess International has said, uh, that um, you know, we do have a number of uh, good hospitals uh, in, in, in Nigeria now, um, but I think uh, the fact that the Duchess is uh, also trying to uh, be accessible to as many Nigerians as possible, I think it also uh, attracted the Vice President's attention. And obviously the, the fact that you know, quality healthcare is, is available in the hospital, obviously, informed this decision as, as well. So I'd like to know more about, you know, what really happened to the vice president, because the public citizen uh, and the post-op, you know, can he get up and go now, you know, or he's in physiotherapy? What is, what is really going on? Just some details, you know, uh, how long did the surgery last? You know, I mean, like we see in other climbs, when the president goes to water read or something, we're getting by the minute detail. Uh, advanced information, what's going on, even some of the procedures being used, you know? Yes. Yeah, can we get some of that? Yes, uh, and uh, I, I hear you, as they say in the, in the, in the US, uh, uh, and um, let me very, very quickly presage that by saying that uh, I came back from the US, uh, I see you as, as I talked about bringing our boys and girls back home, and so uh, I'm part of, of this, I'm not the only one. Um, and I know what you're talking about. Uh, they, gave, they give them blow by blow details in the U.S. Um, maybe, maybe too much. But in any case, uh, yes, uh, people, the, the public is, is, is entitled to, to, to know what's going on with their leaders, in my opinion. Um, and, and so here we are. So to answer your question, uh, the uh, procedure occurred um, uh, late uh, Saturday uh, afternoon, uh, which is about a one-hour operation, and, we, and we've already said that this is a, a so-called stress or ha hairline fracture in the right femur. Uh, fe the femur is the thigh bone, so the big bone, in the, of course, you know, under your, your thigh. And so it was there on, on, on the side of, of the femur. And uh, the operation was about a one hour, carried out by, uh, by uh, three orthopedic surgeons altogether, obviously with a, with a lead and two, and two assistant uh, uh, surgeons, orthopedic surgeons. And, um, Again, a one-hour procedure, and then the recovery was about two hours. When I say recovery, uh, he was in the in our recovery room for two hours before being brought up to his to his room, and it went smoothly, all all according to expectation. Um, uh, there was only only minimal blood loss, just the, what you would expect. Um, he remained stable throughout, and uh, I was able to uh, evaluate him before the operation and and afterwards, and he was. Uh, He's doing well. Physiotherapy started the next day. Uh, it would have been the same day, but, but uh, by the time he came out from recovery, it was already uh, nighttime, really. So uh, for that, yeah, normally you'd start the same day. For that reason, uh, it started the next morning. And I can tell you that uh, uh, physiotherapy originally started with him in bed, which would be normal, at least for the first few hours. But by yesterday, I can report uh, uh, right in, in, in my presence, uh, he walked, uh, so he's, he's walking already, uh, taking a few steps. Uh, you can imagine after a major surgery on his uh, right femur bone, um, that is really very encouraging, and he continues to recover. He's a, he has a strong constitution, and as we would say, has a, uh, well, I'll just say he has a strong constitution, and, and he's, uh, he is very, um, uh, what we would say, com compliant or, or very, uh, he he um, he follows the doctor's orders. advice. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't want to use uh, or you can say orders uh, very very diligently. He's an excellent patient. Oh, good. Uh, you want to say something about that? Uh... Uh, yes, of course. Uh, yes, of course. I mean, uh, it's interesting. The thinking about the vice president following uh, orders. <laughs> He's, um, I, 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 I would say, yes, yes, I, yes, the, the concept of ordering around a vice president is, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he is a model patient. Um, and I, I think we, we have been able to observe at close quarters the, the very essence of the man. 
and it, it comes through in the, the kind of patient that he is, very compliant, um, listens to advice, and as such, he's making the sort of progress that one would expect that a patient, any patient who is compliant, would be making at this stage. So at, as the medical um, director has said, he is um, now um, undergoing physiotherapy. So that's part of his rehabilitation, um, hopefully back into his own home environment. And the multidisciplinary team that has um, been involved with his care have been very, very pleased um, indeed with the progress that he is making um, for precisely that reason. So yes. Okay. Uh, very quickly, I'd like to ask both of you. Everyone has been saying, oh, this is very good that the vice president has chosen to be uh, treated in Nigeria. But then you see, uh, we must underscore the fact that he went to a top grade private hospital. And there are many of such hospitals in Nigeria at the moment, Reddington, Dutchess, even in Abuja, they have quite uh, uh, a number. People returning from abroad to come and invest in the medical sector uh, in Nigeria. Would the, uh, would the uh, vice president have been able to get the same quality of care if we were to go to a public hospital, for example, you know, in Nigeria? Uh, because we have oh, Nigerian doctors are very competent and all of that. Uh, we have the best of the best in Nigeria. Uh, but what do you think is wrong? That there's this gap between the public hospitals and the privately owned hospitals. Would they have gone to a hospital in Okokomaiko, for example? Okokomaiko General Hospital, for example. So, yes, let's start with uh, Dr. Shitabe. You, you, you say um, Okokomaiko General Hospital um, very deliberately in a, a particular tone of voice. Uh, I, I would like to begin by um, acknowledging the tremendous work that our colleagues up and down the country um, do in providing decent health care in, in quite Spartan circumstances, um, actually. Um, colleagues have become quite um, good at making the most of the scarce resources that they have. Um, I, I think really it's about building a system. In, in, in a world in which only about 50% of people all over the world have access to an MRI scan, um, we, we in this country um, seem to be on an upward trajectory in terms of you know, infrastructure and equipment. Um, however, of course, there is the massive problem of brain drain. I, I know that there was um, an article in The Lancet as far back as 10, 15 years ago that said there were more practicing doctors in the U.S. Um, than there are in this country. So that is going to be a very, very important factor in uh, you know, in encouraging people to come back to practice. Um, I said earlier that um, we need not one, but 50 Duchess hospitals. So it, it's about the investment in healthcare, making sure that the facilities that we have in this country at primary, secondary and tertiary care level um, are um, in that collaborative space and able to work together. It's about building a system. On the question of whether or not the president may have, the vice president may have uh, elected to go to a hospital in Okokomaiko, uh, I, I think the first thing that I would say is, of course, um, his, his health is a, a matter of um, a great public interest, but he still is a private individual and he has a choice. Um, I, 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 I cannot, of course, speak for the hospital in Okokomaiko, but I do know Okay, that there are many other hospitals quite like the Duchess doing very, very good work. And our focus is on working together with hospitals like this to provide good access to affordable health care, um, just like we are doing at the Duchess Hospital. Dr. Gumbi? Again, I would, I would echo uh, what, what has been said. Uh, the first thing, as you asked him the question, the first thing that came to my head, I, I remember uh, when we were in the 1980s, I think it was, um, uh, Mrs. Thatcher, if I remember correctly, uh, was admitted to a hospital in Britain, a private hospital. And as you can imagine, uh, that, was, that, was, that was controversial. You know, um, she, she could have gone to a public hospital. So I guess I, I see that to say that, well, it's not just in Nigeria where, where leaders are treated in, in private hospitals. Um, I think it would have 
in those places, it would, really would be a scandal if they had gone to another country. Um, uh, that we just to leave, leave that there. Um, but uh, yes, and again, as, as our CEO, uh, Darashita Bey, has said, you know, uh, there, are an, uh, there are a number of good hospitals I I in Nigeria now. Uh, now, it's also, it is obviously a reality that uh, resources are rather, rather scarce. Um, it is a fact that in Nigeria, the uh, healthcare sector uh, is relatively under-resourced, and that's, that's, sim that's simply a fact. You know, if we look at a country like Britain, uh, spends about 122 billion pounds every year on their national uh, health system. You know, we, we're not expecting Nigeria to spend that much, but it just gives you, it gives you an idea of what it takes to have a uh, high quality uh, public uh, system. So that's a conversation that we would need to have as Nigerians if we want to have high quality health care for everybody. Um, uh, I, would, I would argue or point out that, um, that to, by Western standards, uh, the entire health care sector is, is part and not just uh, the public general hospitals. You know, we all have to... Um, you know, we all have to work with relatively limited resources, you know, even in the fancier hospitals in Nigeria. So this, this speaks to the amount of money that, as a society, we've decided to uh, dedicate to healthcare or the lack of it. Well, we'll also need to prepare to pay higher taxes like they do in the UK because the NHS is funded by taxes. Now, with regards to medical tourism, do you feel legislative intervention is needed. For example, this bill that just passed its second reading in the House of Representatives trying to criminalize by a jail term of, I believe, seven years and or a hefty fine public officials who use public funds on foreign medical trips. A similar bill had passed the same stage, but eventually got thrown out because it breached fundamental human rights, or that was the argument at the time. Do you think that kind of intervention is necessary or advisable? Well, you know, of course, I'm not a politician, and, uh, uh, and my position uh, doesn't directly involve policy, but as a private individual, I, I would say that, you know, I think, I think that in terms of the precise uh, mechanism by which it's uh, accomplished, uh, perhaps, you know, perhaps it, it's not necessary to, to prescribe jail time, but I, I would agree with the premise and the goal. Uh, I, I think that, that uh, all public officials, in my opinion, all public officials in, in Nigeria should, as much as possible, uh, have their health care in Nigeria. If, if the uh, health care need, the operation, uh, if the treatment is available in Nigeria, then they should get it in Nigeria. Uh, if it's available, and, and in, many, in many cases it is available. Now, we, we don't have everything in Nigeria, and I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if, if we don't have it in Nigeria, then, then they can go out. But, but where we do have it, they should stay in Nigeria. Dr. Shetabe, your thoughts on criminalizing um, medical tourism on public funds? Right. Okay. I mean, I, I, I won't restate. Okay. I mean, I, I, I won't restate the obvious. I completely agree with what uh, Dr. Gugumbi has said. However, I, I, I will add, as, as an individual who's responsible for managing a hospital like the Duchess, I would add that it's, um, we would rather focus on what our responsibility is, and the key issue is trust. Um, what we have in this country right now is a crisis of trust. Um, the real reasons that people are deciding, electing to, to seek health care abroad is because they, they do not trust the health care system in this country. So we, we need to, to focus on that and think very, very carefully about what trust means. And, and for us at the Duchess, it means strong clinical governance, strong administrative governance, um, having safety and security in the system, running a, a consultant-led service, being able to provide the breadth of safe care across a variety of specialties, um, from, from cradle till to the, the elderly. Uh, making sure that people feel that um, they are getting precisely the same level of treatment and safety um, as they would 
should they leave the shores of this country? Um, so I, I, I would rather focus on what is our responsibility to do. And it, it is a collective responsibility that, that includes, of course, us at the Duchess Hospital, our colleagues um, in, in other hospitals in this country, Nigerians in diaspora, and of course, um, government. So I, I would stay away from the, the question of whether or not we ought to criminalize um, um, people, um, the, the, the practice of going abroad. Uh, I think what's far more important for us in the medical sphere is that we focus on the reason this is happening. And that key issue is, is trust. Right. And I was excited when you said, talked about Margaret Chacha going to a private hospital, you know, uh, back in the days. But also recently when Boris Johnson was fighting for his life from COVID, he went to an NHS hospital, St. Tommy, I mean, St. Thomas Hospital, which is a like proper NHS trust hospital. But when you dial back, this wasn't the case in Nigeria before. In the 70s, University College Ibadan was rated the fifth best healthcare uh, uh, university teaching hospital in the Commonwealth. And, and then we used to have visits from you know, the Saudi royal family and the likes to come get their healthcare there. You had all the prominent doctors. You know, every department had a great, great person. Even psychiatry department, where it wasn't prominent in the 70s for mental health issues, you had the likes of Dr. Adi Lambo you know, very towering figure and the likes. But today, it's a shadow of itself. Most of those doctors left in the 80s and they found themselves in other parts of the world. But how can we bridge the gap? And th this goes to my question, really. Can we sort of like use the Indian model, the Dr. Devi Shetty model that democratized open heart surgery, made it very, very affordable, you know, over 1,000 hospitals in the rural areas, that people can get this kind of healthcare you give to the barest minimum in society. And again, um, that, that actually is our goal at, at, at Duchess, is to uh, provide um, affordable healthcare to, to as many people as, as possible. And you know, I know what Dr. Shetty was able to do, he was able to um, use the, um, the model of, uh, of Henry Ford, as I understand, uh, by being more uh, efficient with your, with your delivery, you can bring costs down. So that, of course, needs to be done if you're, if you're efficient, you can bring costs down until you can, uh, therefore, obviously, uh, charge less. Now, you know, to, to speak again, we go back to, if you're talking about uh, uh, being able to realistically expect our public officials to use public hospitals, you know, we are talking about, again, it's, it's a question of funding, you know, that you, you, you need money. And, that, and that, is, that also explains what happened to UCH, Luth, and all of these hospitals. Yes, people used to fly back. Uh, my mother flew back from Canada to UCH to deliver me. And I'm not alone. Um, this, I've heard that story over and over. People, people went to UCH for their deliveries. You know, UCH had some of the best doctors in the world. He went on yes. to have, uh, you know, uh, I can think of Dr. Really, Henry Lawson. Adio uh, Lambo, the serve in the World Health Organization, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, Professor Lambo, you know, and, 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 uh, and even there were, there were British doctors there, Nigerian doctors. I mean, I'm not saying you have to be a British doctor to be a great, but I mean, the point being they had, they had great doctors, you know, it was one of the best, it was one of the best hospitals in the world, probably comparable to, to Harvard, to, to uh, Massachusetts General Hospital back then. Uh, it's, you know, Things have changed. Money, money is, is the single biggest reason. It really is. These things take, take a lot of funding. You look at a, a US hospital, we're talking about a billion dollars or more per hospital. You know, I'm not saying that, that we need to spend a billion dollars in each hospital here, but we need to do more, we need to do better. And, and clearly we have we have resources in this country, but it's a question of how we choose to deploy them. And obviously, obviously we do need to, to grow them, but you know, I'm not a, an economist, uh, but, but we need better resourcing. All right, uh, Dr. And, and that's absolutely correct. All, and that's absolutely correct. It all boils down to the question of um, funding. So let's, let's look at some of the numbers. Uh, the, the 100 million, um, 100 billion pounds that uh, Dr. Ogunupi just talked about, 10% of that is on diabetes care alone. Um, now, we know that there is a, an iceberg of risk in this country that is cardiovascular disease. It's just waiting to erupt. Let's put that in, in context. Um, per capita spend on health care in a place like the U.S. is about eleven, twelve thousand dollars 12000 In Nigeria, it's about $70 um, U.S. 
Um, so it, it, funding is, is the key issue. Now, the Duchess Hospital is as, as government as it gets in the public sector. Maybe that's part of what's contributing to the picture of success that we, we see. Um, the, the hospital, of course, has had support from the Central Bank of Nigeria and the, the, the Bank of Industry. So we are not burdened by um, double-digit interest rates in, um, in foreign exchange. Another reason why we're able to pass those benefits um, on to the people and begin to speak of um, access to affordable health care. So even though it looks like a big imposing um, building, um, our, our gate is open, and that's a metaphor um, to say that um, this is a hospital for the community. We, we are able to do this largely because of the funding support that we have received from the federal government. So just to underscore the, 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 the fact that funding is really, really important. Uh, if you get the funding right and you get the governance right, you begin to have the start of what you can call a proper, robust healthcare system. And, and that's precisely the reason that, um, that Boris Johnson can end up having is uh, being admitted to the ICU at uh, St. Thomas's because whether or not, whether you're in the NHS or you're in the private sector, you can be assured of a properly funded healthcare system. And that is precisely what we need to achieve in this country. Okay, well, quickly, let me pack three questions together. I recall that uh, the Vice President commissioned the Deutsche Hospital last year, October 2021. So, uh, is he your friend personally beyond being vice president and could that have been a factor in his choice of the hospital? Two, how much is he paying for the surgery? I, I would like to have an idea in case I see somebody who also has a, a pain in the leg, you know, so that I will have an idea of the cost. And then finally, I mean, beyond medicine, you are running a business. Are you coping with the high cost of diesel to keep the hospital going? Dr. Shitabe. <laughs> Those questions been <laughs> Those questions would naturally be directed at me, wouldn't they? Uh, first of all, on the, on, the, on the question of whether or not the, the vice president is, um, is um, I believe you personalized that and said my friend. Um, no, he is the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He is uh, a national treasure, and it is an honor to have him in our hospital. Um, having said that, of course, he receives the, the, the same level of safe care that uh, anyone who would come into the hospital would receive. Of course, the additional considerations for um, security, because this is a matter of, uh, of national interest and security. Um, your, your second question was to uh, was about how much he's, he's paying. Um, I, I'm sure, of course, that um, you, you wouldn't expect me to answer that question, um, uh, regardless of who it is concerning, vice president or not. It is um, um, uh, the question of what a patient is paying is a very very personal matter. But what I will say is that um, the, the cost of a repair. Uh, surgery for the kind of condition that the vice president has had is uh, very, very affordable indeed. And I've, I've, I've gone to great lengths in this interview to explain why we can even begin to speak off um, access to affordable health care. Um, we are not burdened by the, 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 the kinds of loans that perhaps others would, would, would be burdened, burdened with. And the, the next question you asked was about, uh, what was the other question? About diesel. diesel is a, a perennial problem and a, a hugely significant issue that affects all of our lives, not just healthcare. How are we coping with it? Well, of course, it is um, contributing to the bottom line. Um, it is a very um, lofty idea to have a, a service like the Duchess International Hospital positioned to do many great things. It does have to be underpinned by sustainable business. Um, so yes, um, like, like every business, like every facility in this country, like anyone who's trying to do anything worthwhile in this country, the cost of diesel is, um, is, is a very, very significant consideration indeed. Um, so the, the sooner we fix that problem, <laughs> the, the better um, for all of us. But I think the central message here is that the Vice President is getting very good care and he's making very significant um, progress indeed, um, um, diesel or not. <laughs> Thank you very much that for is joining the bottom us. Line. Yes, well, I think that's about it. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shitabe and Dr. Ogumbi. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.